Most of us are drowning in a sea of information um, and it's very hard to make head nor tail of it, especially when you can't seem to get a big enough overview of it. Um, so I'm going to go through and talk to you about why you want a mind map, why I started mind mapping, how you go about doing it. It's really very simple. You don't have to be artistic. And even if you've tried it before and it hasn't worked out, I'd encourage you to have a watch of this and have another go. Uh, and then I'm going to talk to you about the three different kinds of mind mapping, which would be mind mapping in your mind, mind mapping on paper, which is one of my favorites, and also computer mind mapping, which has its place. Uh, I'll show you some of the tools I use and the software I use, um, and I'll give you some examples of when I've used it and a list of you know kind of examples of things you could do with it um, and why you'd want to use this as opposed to other ways of doing it. So. And during the course of this, I'm going to be putting mind maps on the screen. Also, I'll put in the description a list of resources you can look at, videos I'd recommend, books I'd recommend, and if you want to buy some of the tools I use, there'll be an affiliate link where you can buy those as well, if you want, or you can buy your own tools if you decide to go that way. So one of the first reasons you want to get started with mind mapping is it's really the way your brain works, and it's... I think one of the challenges we have with education and the way we're taught to learn at school, and certainly the way I was taught, was that you use a pen and paper, you use blue-black ink, you can't use any other kind of ink. I used to get told off wanting to use turquoise ink and other colors. Um, and it really kind of makes a monochromatic world, and there's a reason for that, I believe, and it's part of the intentional dumbing down uh, of us as a species. Now you've got two sides to your brain. You have the left side which controls the right side of your body and you have the right side which controls the left side of your body and they do very different things. The left side is responsible for logic, numbers, sequence, analysis, words, language. The right side of your brain is responsible for spatial awareness, imagination, color, rhythm, tempo, holistic, daydreaming, dimension and that kind of thing. And one of the challenges is if you're forced into this box where you're using just the left side of your brain, which is what education seems to be about, if you're using half your brain, does that not make you a half wit? I'm making light of that. But if you aren't using all of your brain, you're really shutting down all of your creative potential. If you look at some of the greatest minds in the world, people like Leonardo da Vinci as an example, um, he was absolutely incredible, but he used the full gamut of everything, color, rhythm, music, uh, shapes. If you look at his works, it was full of sketches and drawings and doodles and that kind of thing. And those are incredibly powerful. I think one of the most important things about mind mapping for me is that in a world where rote learning, so you, you learn to repeat what you've been told and you don't give it any analysis and you're not taught to think, I think that is incredibly dangerous unless you want to build a race of automatons and non-thinking people, which possibly could be part of the plan. Um, but when you're making notes or when you're taking notes, you want to remember things that are important to you. And one of the things that are great about mind maps, instead of just trying to capture everything, you're paying attention for certain things and the notes become very personal to you, which is what they should be. Now, I think one of the other things that's really important about it is that you don't think in words. If I said to you the word house, you don't type house inside your mind and then start to examine it. Normally what would happen is you'll get an image or a sense of something like your home or someone else's home or your favorite house, that kind of thing. And immediately you start to think of other things because your brain works by association. It's this massive association machine. So you tend to record just the key images, the key points, if you will, and you then build by association. And if you look at all the things in nature, trees are the same thing. You know, bushes, plants, us, we have this kind of central core and then we have things coming off. And they radiate out like branches. Everything is like that. Your um, vasculatory system is like that. Your nervous system, everything in nature. So you want to mimic nature, and that's what mind maps allow you to do. So instead of having to decode what's going on in here and then try and put it into words and structure and sentence and language, babble, if you will, on paper, the mind maps allow you to mimic nature. So you're removing that kind of translation thing, and you have a much purer experience of capturing information. Um, it also allows you to think radiantly because you're always working into larger and larger space rather than trying to cram yourself down and trying to figure out what's going on and reading through volumes of notes and pages, trying to get the key essence of what you want. 
Um, and it also allows you to focus on the whole. So you, you get a, a gestalt view, if you will, the macrocosm, but you can also dive into the microcosm, into the nitty gritty detail as well. So it, for me, it allows you to do pretty much everything and it allows you to use your imagination, which is the most powerful thing, your power brain, your subconscious, whatever you want to call it. It allows you to really key into that and make great use of that because that to me is the far cleverer, far more creative part of us all. Now, as far as how you go about doing it, I see lots of things that, you know, I mean, mind mapping is a very personal thing, but I think if you pay attention to the kind of core structures and the basics and master them, the laws of mind mapping, if you will, they're not strictly laws, but what I found was when I was doing research for these videos and reading all the books again and other books and watching lots of videos that my take on mind mapping had become... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It had kind of, I'd gone my own way a little bit with it. So I'd brought myself back and started again. It's actually improved my whole experience again. So it's really very, very simple. The minimum thing you need to do a mind map is just your mind. But getting it down on paper is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Um, because getting the, the images out and starting to work with them, to conceptualize with them, that connection you have with the piece of paper and the pencil or the pen, that is incredibly powerful. And that's one of the reasons why I've moved back away from doing so many and pretty much all my computer mind maps because I feel like I'm getting sucked into the matrix here with all these screens and devices. And that's not something I want because as we look for answers to questions, a lot of the answers actually are inside us. They're not inside the matrix, if you will. I'm gonna keep talking about that as we go. So the minimum you need is a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen. It's better to have multiple colored pens and pencils because we're naturally drawn to color. It makes it much more interesting. So what you do is you start in the center of the page. Now, I'll just give you a quick example. Uh, if you think of the word happy, if you wrote happy in the middle of the page, then you can draw a nice fluffy cloud around if you want. By the way, don't worry if you're not artistic, you don't think you can draw, you can sketch, it doesn't matter. That can come with practice. I wasn't particularly good at anything. I'm an adequate sketcher now. Um, but there is something nice about trying to make it look nice and make it feel nice as you do it. But a lot of my mind maps, as you'll see from like this one here, it's just a quick hurry dump of information that I want to try and organize, conceptualize, see what the links are, see how the whole thing fits together and make sense of it. And other times you can spend a little more time. Now, you might do several versions of that. We'll come back to that. So the first thing you're going to do is start with a central image. And that is the theme of the mind map, the thing you want to focus on. Draw it in dimensions if you want. Draw it in multiple colors. Three or more are ideal. Put some kind of shape around it if you want, if it's relevant. And then draw the branches out. Now you want to draw curvy linear branches like in a tree. So they start very, very fat and they get thicker and they curve. And you can make them look absolutely beautiful. That organic feeling makes it interesting to your eye. Nature doesn't have many straight lines, if any, when you really look at it. It's all about curves and it's much more interesting to our brain to have some kind of organic structure to it. So more curvy branches I feel work better. That's one of the downsides with a lot of the software. They tend to draw very straight branches, although a lot of the new software is getting better for that. So you would draw a curvy branch and that's the first layer. Those are like the basic ordering ideas, the big chapters, the chapter titles in a book, if you will. So the on the spine of the book, that would be like the center of your mind map. That's the thing you want to focus on. And then the branches off the basic ordering ideas, chapter headings, whatever you want to call them. And then you can start to branch off them more and more detail, more granular detail as you want. Only put one word per line. A lot of people write phrases. I prefer to do the purer way if you can, and it's not always possible, but if you can capture it in one word because one word allows you to radiate out and have tons of associations to that word. As soon as you write more words into a phrase, you're really starting to limit the number of associations you would make to that. And the whole point of this is to really explode your thinking capability, your ability to recall, your ability to draw connections, your ability to ingest, internalize, and make sense and memorize the information so you can get back at it. The more artistic the mind map, the more colors on the mind map, the more you will remember it. It's much easier that way than a flat sheet. Now, with that said, sometimes I've only got a pencil or a piece of paper, even though I do tend to wander around with notebooks like this and pens and bits of paper and card stuffed in my pocket. You know, I've scratched my maps onto the dirt. I've drawn them on the side of my car in the dirt if I had to remember something. 
there's all sorts of different ways of doing it but the more beautiful the more organic you can make it for you the better it's going to be um, so one keyword per line if you can do an image instead of a word do that if you can use a symbol, you can draw symbols to link things, so there might be a branch where you want to reference another branch, you can either do a connecting line like you can see on this mind map, and they're very useful, and you can write things on the connecting line if you require, or you can do little symbols like you'll see here where there's like a number one, and that refers to point one on my daily page, and that is a, there's a radial clock in there, I'll come back to that, but that's an example. Um, so keywords, thick branches, colors, arrows, spacing. As an interesting thing in music and in art, the spaces, the gaps, that's where a lot of interest lies for us. So keep everything nicely spaced out. It's kind of interesting, as I was scanning these mind maps, I do notice that I tend to place mine a little high on the page. So I've made a note to myself to try and lower them down again. So once you've done that, you've got the basis of a mind map. Now, if you look at this one here, which is the one I'm looking at, it was drawn in one color, but to break it more lively, rather than redraw it, I decided most of the information was there. So I simply added some color to the branches and then I put some cloud shapes around to actually make the branches stand uniquely on their own. And it's very, very simple to that. This other map here, which is the overview map, I've done much the same thing where I've used a colored pen to highlight the different colors on the branches. You could, instead of writing in one color on the branches, uh, like I do on my daily mind maps, you can actually write in the same color ink. Whatever works best for you, because it's going to be your style. It's about you creating your thing. But I would encourage you to do at least 100 mind maps. Try to keep as best you can, as close you can, to the pure idea of the central image, the central theme, the thick organic branches with the basic ordering ideas, and then the smaller detail of that. Uh, using symbols and images where you can instead of words. In fact, draw some maps out where you only do images. Now, here's an example of one that shows you how to do three-dimensional shapes. And this is in a, a book, a Tony Buzan book, which I will recommend. Um, it was the book I first read probably, I think it was about 93 when I started doing this. In and around then, it was soon after that book came out. Um, that book there, it's it's been really influential in fact, that 3D map I'm just showing you here, that's been influential on shapes and, and, and how I learned how to do things. And I used a lot of my arrows have got that kind of three-dimensional shape and that texture into them because I find that very interesting. So now as far as methods go, you can draw mind maps in your mind. You're doing that all the time anyway. You're thinking of something and you're associating other things to that. You're reaching out and clipping it all together. That's how we think. Putting them down on paper. Now, I used to do tons and tons uh, on paper, and then computers came out, and I thought, right, computer everything, paper is rubbish, and I moved across as much as I could to that, but I still found I was doing a lot of paper ones. And as I said recently, I've decided that I don't want to get sucked into the matrix because information can get lost, it can get turned off, it can get corrupted. It's pretty hard to corrupt a mind map. Now, the one thing I do is if the mind map has a lot of good information on it, I will scan it and then I will archive it as well so I've got a backup copy uh, but I have quite a lot of files of these and it's interesting to go back and go through that and in future videos I think I'll show you the kind of filing system I'm developing for that and archiving indexing that kind of thing to make it easier to find. Computer mind maps are great. I've come across all sorts of different software. Uh, Gideon King used to do a very good one, but he sold his company a while back and I stopped using that. The one I use currently now is iThoughts HD, which I'll put a link to. Uh, that works extremely well. It ties my phone, my iPad, and my computer together. One of the nice things about using, using a computer mind map is you can drag the branches, move them around. Uh, you can add images, you can add hyperlinks, you can link them to different mind maps so you can put a reference and say well here this will link to another mind map so for example this one here uh, so here is my overview of my map and it's actually very big if you look um, and then I've collapsed branches down here so if we go to archive where's archived there we go so you can make branches bigger or smaller but each of these if you click on one it should take you okay I've changed that one so so if you click on one like Remedy, it opens up my mind map on Remedy. Now there's a lot of words in there, like I said, and that's one of the things I've noticed I was doing where I was putting more phrases down. Uh, another example for you is my YouTube channel. When I decided to look at YouTube, I decided that I had to gather a ton of information on how to do it. So this map here is immense. We'll just zoom in closely, and you can see the basic 
or the brush recording ideas, basic recording ideas. So about being unique and telling your story. Uh, here about lighting and there's links to websites on here um, and the best kind of lighting, the best time of day, sound and music, how to mix sound, how to focus on sound, how to deal with refurb, about your software, about learning how to film yourself, uh, camera settings and that one there is particular to settings for video. There's also a settings for my camera for taking nice photographs about how to do the background types of shots, scenes, b-roll on videography, foreground, background, transitions, um, editing. So I found Walter Murch and I've got a whole mind map from him but that tells you how to do good quality editing. Um, moving across to post-production as you can see there's just tons of information. Now this would have been pages and pages and pages and pages. The thing with a mind map is if a picture is worth a thousand words and you have ten images on your mind map you've effectively got something like ten thousand words of your story you can capture an entire book on a mind map. In fact, I do mind map the books I read so that I can just go and reference what was important to me and I could read 10, 15 books in an afternoon, book summaries of you all that I've mind mapped. And we'll come on later on to some examples about that. But it gives you the ability to capture a ton of data very quickly and you can go back in the future and just add to it because you're working into more and more space. You're not trying to run through and add a quick side note here or try and make sense of it. Uh, it's because you're working off keywords, you're capturing data very, very quickly that way. Um, so, I thought is the one I use on that one. Another good one is Ayoya, I think you pronounce it, A-Y-O-A. -A, and I believe he originally worked with Boozan. Um, I found that software to be quite good, um, but I don't like their pricing model. Um, it seems expensive to me for what you get. And on my older equipment, my old iPhone and my old iPad, the three-dimensional, the, the curvy drawings, if you will, on the mats, which look lovely, doesn't function properly at all, and it's not something I think they're going to address. It probably still works in the web browser, but I can see over time that may well be a problem. I do use that software on some of the projects where I collaborate with other people on mind maps. Um, now, as far as personal stuff goes, I have a uh, file uh, which has all my day planner in it, which I'll do another video about, but that has a radial clock, which is a 24 hour clock, as you can see here on the left of the screen. Um, and as an example, uh, if you have a quick look at this one, this was what I wanted to do for the day. So there's some stuff to do on mind mapping. Um, I'm looking at the right page actually. Yeah, there was some mind maps I wanted to make, there was stuff I wanted to buy, there were some interviews I wanted to reach out to people. And there was a quick notice I sent the emails at a certain time. Um, there were some phone calls I made, there were some jobs to do, which is on the left side here. And on the top left you can see a radial clock, which is a 24 hour clock, which makes much more sense to represent time that way in my head than I can see where the blocks of time are. Now, again, you can capture whatever information you want. You don't have to use this. If you want to use this, let me know. I'm probably going to make it that you can buy these files because I created a whole series of files so you can produce these as you want. Um, so I slept six and a half hours that day. Um, I meditated between 6.40 and 7.30. I went for a nice walk in the woods. Uh, I went to Lidl. It's got a list of the food I had for lunch. I worked on a video in the afternoon. There's a little reference number one you can see there, and that was the Catherine Fitz video. Um, I had a Zoom call with Paula, um, and I had a bath that night. And also, it was quite warm, or quite cold rather. It was sunny, but it was very cold. So again, you can capture what you want. I'm only capturing information that's important to me that I can look back on and go, oh yeah, I did that then, I did that then. Um, but it's what you want to capture. Every mind map is unique. And by the way, everyone is unique. If 10 of us got together and I drew a paperclip on a piece of paper with 10 branches off it and said, just write words that you associate with a paperclip on that. We all compared notes at the end of doing that after say 10, 15 minutes. There might be one or two similarities and that's it. The rest would be unique. And that's one of the most powerful things about this. It really enhances your uniqueness and your creativity. And that's where group mind maps and everything are a good idea. Uh, but again, we'll come back to that. So I've already covered about the tools I use in terms of the software. Now, as far as paper goes, better quality paper is better. This mind map here, which was a book summary, I rattled off really quickly and added color afterwards. It's on thin paper. And if you look at the back, you can see my fountain pen really went to town on that. I prefer writing on thicker paper. That was the only paper I could find at the time. Um, 90 or 100 gram works really, really well. It's lovely. Um, I'd encourage you to get yourself a decent pen. I like uh, my Lamy fountain pen. Um, these Koh Noor clutch pencils are great. 
this Faber Castell pencil is good. My high tech right point is really good. Uh, these coloured pens I got here are fantastic. You've got the very, very thin nibs, which are great for writing with and for adding that highlight of colour. And then you've got the thicker ones, which are great for drawing the branches or writing on the thicker branches if you want. Resources wise, you might want to have a look at anything by Tony Buzan on YouTube. I'll put a link to some videos of his. He was the the father behind this, if you will. And I was very fortunate back in 95, I went on a seminar for marketing and he happened to be there for two days. And I got to spend some time with him, had some lunch with him. And Vander North was there as well, uh, who was the MD for his organization, I believe at the time, I think. And it was really mind expanding to spend time speaking about him, about speed reading, comprehension, understanding, mind mapping, everything. And that's really where I really started to get into it. Um, Mind Map Apps is another good website and Mind Map Inspiration, you might want to have a look at that. Some of these are incredibly artistic. As I said, don't worry about that. You may develop that skill over time. You may not, it doesn't matter. You may just want to do mind maps, which are just monochromatic if you want one color, it's up to you. I do a fair number of them, as you can see here. All I had today, that day when I drew this one was a pencil, my trusty little Faber-Castell, a rubber, and a tiny piece of card, and I needed to get some information down out of my head so I could see what I was doing, and that's what came out from this. So I used more shading, more texture, more shape on that one to try and give it some more, and then later on when I had another colored pen, I had a bit of color to the book. Now as far as uses, you could literally use them for anything, and I do use them for so much information gathering, note making, note taking, uh, planning, time planning, day planning, month planning, year planning, uh, event planning, business trips, social trips, when we take trips away in the motorhome, I do a mind map and then the branches of the days of the week. And on those we put the places we're likely to stay, the things we'd like to do, and then I can add notes there as to whether we liked it, what the site was like that we went to, roughly how long we were driving for, how much we spent on the site, that kind of thing. So I've got these references that when we say, oh, should we go back to Devon again as an example, I can pull the maps for Devon up, see when we went, what we saw, where we stayed, and what our thoughts and feelings were at the time. And it's a really good way of capturing information like that. And it makes the trips more meaningful. And you know, I can also add things about, I'd like to see this next time, or let's revisit that. So it becomes a much um, richer experience when you can refer back to information like that. Uh, you could use it just for thinking. I quite often do that. If I'm really confused about a subject, I might draw a line down the middle of the page, draw a question mark, put a word or an image about what I'm trying to figure out. And on one side, I'll do the pluses. And on the other side, I'll do the minuses, a dyadic mind map. And then I'll simply add a weighting score out of 10 to each of the points. And then I'll add the scores together and the highest score gets me doing it. Uh, I found that works quite well. Um, <clears throat> it's a good way of learning language. You can use it for tracking information. You can use it for monitoring things. I have some maps where we just keep adding information to that. Book summaries we talked about. That's a really good thing to do, I think, because you're summarizing the key points of the book that's relevant and important to you, rather than just trying to capture everything about it. It's a fantastic way that you've got one page and you've got an entire book on there, but you can do some more stuff with that if you wanted. What if, as a family, you each read a book and you're a family of four. So you've got four books read, digested and mind mapped and then you have a get together and you share the information with the other people so they can draw their own mind maps. Then you've got between you four books absorbed, comprehended, ingested and put inside you. Um, it's a really good way of doing it. Businesses do that together. I've seen people do that with like six books. They'll get together for three hours and they will share the knowledge of six books via mind map and people will then mind map and they'll have access and information on that. It's an incredible way of training staff. It's an incredible way of cost cutting exercises. Boeing used it to save $10 million uh, on training. I've used it for all sorts of things, uh, gone into businesses and mapped out their process and sat down with them. And once you've got it out of your head and onto a piece of paper, you can see where all the breaks in the process are. You can move things around and fix it. Now I'll give you one quick final example for this map. Um, I was asked back in 2009 to go and help a friend of mine with a presentation to do with mental health uh, and it was part of the NHS and we were trying to work out a way that we could gather all the information, get it out of people's minds as a group mind, capture it and then put it all together and present it back and I agreed to go down and mind map it and I can't remember how many people were there, I think it was between 50 and 70. 
Um, I broke people into tables. I arranged to get some individuals there, some, some young men and women, and I spent about 40 minutes beforehand teaching them how to mind map, just the basics of it. We had big sheets of paper. It was A3. It may have been A2. I think it was A2. And we had packs of colored pens. And I got everyone that arrived there to sit with people they didn't know. And there was one mind mapper on the table. And there was a lead. The lead person asked the questions. The mind mapper acted as a scribe to gather the information back. So you've got tables. And again, I can't remember the number. But I have to look at my notes on that. But let's say there were seven tables. You've got seven mind maps coming in. I then took all those mind maps. We looked at them. I drew out one master mind map with the key points coming back off the questions and suggestions. And then I gave a presentation back. So in the space of several hours, we took all the information out of people's minds. We collated it. We put it back. I then gave a 15, 20 minute presentation back with all the key points. Remember before I said that everyone has different ideas and different things being said? So we accessed an absolute ton of information that we could then give back and put back. And subsequent to the meeting, we took all of that and put it onto electronic mind maps using Gideon King software um, and then distributed it back out to people. Now, I suspect very little, if anything, got done with that because I don't think solutions are what's being looked at in the NHS. And I don't think it ever has been. They keep talking about that, but I just see evidence of something else. That's another story altogether. The point of telling you that was that it was the only method that I could think of that we could extract that much data that quickly in a clear format that I could then take onto one big master mind map and put it all back and then give a competent presentation back with the information all in a matter of a few hours. Um, and then obviously be able to disseminate the information on after that. So I think I've probably talked for more than long enough on this video about that. Please do give this a try get yourself a piece of paper and a pencil oh by the way it's very important as well you turn it landscape <laughs> 5g sorry about that so it's very important as well that you turn the piece of paper that way rather than that way if you can if you can't get blank paper write on line paper and ignore the lines it's better on blank paper i found um so central image the thing you want to think about make notes on discuss describe whatever Make it an image if you can. Do it in a minimum of three colors if you can. The thick, curvilinear, organic branches, the basic ordering ideas, the themes, and then the sub-information off that. Quite often what I'll do, just to finish this off, is I will do a quick burst one in one color. I'll look at that. I'll then figure out what to do with it. Maybe I want to add some shapes and images to that. And then I'll do a version two after a break. And then I'll do version two. For example, this one here, I was exploring the concept of lawful versus legal and how lawful is the domain of man and woman and how legal is the domain of person. And while I was doing the initial notes, it struck me that the legal world is an, an aberrant, abhorrent, an aberration. It's an aberration, a mirror image, uh, a corrupted mirror image too, of lawful, which is why then I decided to draw it on the left side, draw a line like a mirror, and I actually wrote everything backwards on that so you could read it in a mirror if, unless you want to sit there and just struggle and read it that way. But to me, that was a very good visual representation of that kind of information. And I certainly couldn't have done that with a piece of software that, in a way that I know of that would have made sense. So have some fun with that. Let me know how you get on in the comments. Uh, if you had any breakthroughs, how long you've been mind mapping for, the kind of things you've used it. I'd really like to get a discussion going on all those things. And I'm going to work up some other content on this. And one final thing. Teaching mind mapping to someone else is one of the best things you could do for them. I've, I've taught mind maps to people that were learning disabled and they were just educationally disabled because the educational system was trying to force them to do something that wasn't the way they were wired. It's not the way any of us are wired, but them in particular, it really went against it. And once we got them thinking and utilizing a mind map and working with the mind maps, their intelligence really is off the chart and genius as it is with most people. It's about learning how to think and to capture and organize and make sense in a way that reflects what's going on in your inner world. And then you'll have a much stronger, better time with it. So have some fun with that. Enjoy yourselves. You guys are amazing. If you want to give me some support, there's links in the video below. Um, there'll be a ton of links probably from this one anyway to some resources for you, books I recommend and that kind of thing. And you guys are great. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.